tradition of having a leather helmet means a lot. Uh, the older guys, we, we all have them, we wear them, we wear them with pride, we wear them the way that they look and the way that they fit and the way that, you know. I, I just took a walk through the, and saw how each helmet was handcrafted and how long it takes uh, to make a leather helmet the, the way that we like it. And, and it. They're all craftsmen and they put a lot of hours of work into their gear and into their equipment and it means a lot as a finished product for us having it. The craftspeople who make Cairns leather fire helmets begin with sheets of high quality top grain leather called bends. The basic shapes for the crown and brim or watershed of the helmet are cut from the center where the bends are thickest and the leather most durable. This custom built folding machine is where the flat quarters begin their transformation into the classic rib dome of a Cairns leather fire helmet. Another custom built machine sets the fold by compressing the leather between rollers. The brim blank is skived before soaking in water to make it workable. Skiving tapers the edge of the leather to make it more flexible. The Cairns helmet with its traditional flowing brim helped to define the American style fire helmet. 19th century European fire helmets were usually modeled after military styles. In America, members of the New York City Volunteer Department wore leather fire caps as early as 1813. The purpose of those early fire hats was to identify them as firefighters, not to protect them. A steel wire embedded in the brim helps it hold its distinctive shape even when exposed to direct flame. In 1836, Cairns and brother founder Henry Gratacap saw the need for fire hats to do more than just identify. They had to provide protection as well. The traditional American fire helmet he popularized was among the world's first specifically designed to protect firefighters. In 1850, Gratacap moved his Manhattan operation three blocks further north. Friends predicted that moving so far uptown would ruin his business. Their predictions for failure didn't materialize. A catalog page from the era offers a clue as to why. A black number 5A standard reinforced hat for paid department service with parts liable to be affected by water or heat reinforced by metal cost just $57 a dozen. Since 1840, Cairns leather fire helmets have been graced by the classic ivy vine scroll work that still adorns them today. The quarters are sewn together with heavy cotton thread. Later, the helmet will be dipped into a proprietary mixture of gum rosin, mineral spirits, and other chemicals. The dipping process hardens the leather and coats the thread, making it fire resistant. To help ensure consistent quality in hand operations, everyone on the manufacturing floor is cross-trained. Some hand operations are being partially automated to improve productivity and ergonomics, but sewing the top of the helmet isn't one of them. It's a labor-intensive, high-skill operation, and doing it by hand is still the best way. Only a highly skilled few receive this training. By now, the helmet's crown has been blocked into its familiar rib dome shape. For decades, the blocks were made of wood. Moisture from the leather would seep into the wood blocks, causing them to swell and warp. They had to be replaced regularly. The polyurethane blocks used today are unaffected by moisture, yield more consistent results and cost less. In this operation, a craftsman unites the crown and brim for the first time. He opens two seams and then rolls back the edge of the crown to form a flange. This tool squares the opening of the crown so that it fits flush to the brim. After placing the crown onto the brim, the craftsman uses dividers to check its position front to back and a ruler to center it left and right. He uses these nails to position the crown temporarily and then staples it to get it ready for sewing. Two rows of stitches permanently unite brim and crown.
It's very easy to ruin a helmet at this point. The craftsman trims away the excess leather, and one slip of the knife could nullify days of work. After the dip tank and eight weeks of curing, the helmet returns to the production floor for final work. The first step is to trim the head opening. A brass sizing band is used to check the dimensions of the opening. The soft goods are made in another part of the factory. Fire and heat resistant Nomex material thread binds the chin strap buckles into position. The chin strap and ear laps of all Cairns helmets are made of Nomex or PVI Kevlar material. After the suspension and impact cap are installed, specially formulated flame control primers and paints make the shell flame retardant. The impact cap is riveted to the shell. Unpainted, natural finish helmets like this one receive several coats of shellac. Now it's unclear whether Gratacap invented the shape of the classic American fire helmet or merely popularized it. There's little doubt that he pioneered one of the most enduring and recognizable features of the traditional fire helmet, the front piece. Whether the front piece is a vestige of the fire hat's original purpose, to identify firefighters, is anybody's guess. That modern front pieces allow firefighters across the country to express their dedication to the communities they serve is a certainty. At last count, the Cairns Fronts Configurator offered over 27 million combinations. Once a customer makes their selections, front piece components are custom made, hand placed and stitched into position using Nomex material thread. While shooting the manufacturing steps shown in this video, the firefighter we met earlier visited. I'm down here at Cons. I'm getting a front piece made up for my helmet. I wanted a traditional Cons front piece, so I'm here and they're making it up for me today and I will be leaving here today with uh, what I want. At MSA, we build life-saving quality into all our products. With customer satisfaction like that, there's little doubt that Cairns Leather Fire Helmets will be protecting firefighters for at least another 170 years. To learn about the entire family of MSA products, visit www.msanet.com.